Good morning, it's Wednesday the 1st of April. I'm Sarah Jane Stevens, priest at Sullington and Thacom with Warminghurst Parishes. And this is a reflective service for worship in isolation. If you'd like the liturgy, the words for this service, you'll find them on our church websites. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we begin our time with God, in the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard highly, lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastes every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not God's children. Moreover, we have human parents to discipline us, and when we respect them, should we not even be more willing to be subject to the father of all and live? For our parents disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them. But God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share his holiness. Now, discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but it yields <clears throat> the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have tra been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight the paths for your feet so that what is lame will not be put out of joint but rather be healed. That was Hebrews 12, 3 to 13. What a wonderful reading to have as we come to the end of our Lenten period. Oh, had you forgotten it was Lent? <laughs> I'm forgetting it's Lent sometimes because this period of isolation and, and separation is so strange. It takes over everything. And there have been a few days where I've completely forgotten it was Lent at all. But one of my colleagues wrote on Facebook the other day, this is the Lentiest Lent I've ever Lented. And that makes complete sense to me. Silly and... Um, and makes no sense at the same time but this is a strangely Lenten period this isolation this time that we have to refigure ourselves to think about God and think about life but this reading from Hebrews 12 it challenges us about discipline now discipline is not a popular thing some people think we shouldn't discipline our children at all because it's not fair on them or it's against their human rights but 
this scripture is saying that discipline comes from a place of love. God loves us so much that he encourages us to take times to discipline ourselves. Lent being one of those, taking time out from things that we normally do to instead redirect our energies on God. And that little quote from the Old Testament there, my child do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastens every child whom he accepts. So God loves us enough to discipline us. That's a very strange concept, I think, in today's world. To love somebody enough to take the time to discipline them. To treasure somebody enough to take the effort to reformulate their thinking and their direction. That's how much God loves us. God loves us enough to discipline us. I wonder what you've learnt in your Lenten discipline so far. Verse 11 accepts that discipline is, is usually painful rather than pleasant at the time, but yet later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. So there is an end to our time of discipline. Although, funnily enough, at the moment we can't see an end to our time of isolation. But Lent will come to an end. Easter is coming. So verse 12, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight the paths for your feet so that what is lame will not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. So now is the time towards the end of our Lenten discipline to start building ourselves up so that we have the energy, the strength, the balance, the discipline to be able to enjoy the celebration of Easter to the best of our ability. Sometimes I think God's world is a little topsy-turvy and here we've learned that discipline gives us the strength to carry on and celebrate in great joy. Amazing. Amen. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We now have a short time of prayer and intercession for others. You may wish to pause the video here so that you have enough time to pray as you would like to. We intercede for others in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. I pray for myself in my isolation that God would meet with me. I pray for others in their loneliness that God would meet with them. I pray for our country, those who lead and influence, and those surprising heroes who keep this place going. And I pray for the world. Lord, bring your healing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I pray that you will have a good day in your isolation or whatever it is you are doing. If you are working to keep this country going, you have our thanks and our prayers. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do go on to our websites where you'll find lots of resources for prayer and worship and even for activities in your isolation. So you've got St Mary's Thacom and St Mary's Sullington Church websites with all that information. We'll see you there. God bless. <laughs>